are the much requested Gambit and Rogue coming to Marvel Strike Force in the near future? Well, there are some clues in Marvel Strike Force right now that indicate that this may be happening. We're going over that evidence to let you decide if you think they're coming very soon or not. And it is Monday, and that means it's time to go over your questions from the Discord. So we're going over all that in this video, guys. And if you're ready for it, find that like button and let's go smash it! Alley flying. Hello, happy Monday, Valley Maniacs. I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you're ready for a great video. We're taking a look at some clues in the game that may indicate that Gambit and Rogue may be coming very, very soon. We're also taking a look at all of the questions from the mailbag. It is Monday mailbag time. So yes, we're going over all of them, but without further ado, before we get to all that, it is time to pay some bills. So big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Ray Raid Shadow Legends. You need a little excitement in your life? Well, it's time to snap into some Raid Shadow Legends. Did you know Raid Shadow Legends is played all over the world in 195 countries with over 76 million people that have played? That's almost four times the population of the New York metro area. And one of the reasons Raid is so popular is all the content they're constantly adding. There's over 500 champions in Raid with so many areas to use them in. You have campaign missions, arena battles, dungeon battles with bosses like the Minotaur, and of course, the newly added Doom Tower for some extra challenge. And another thing I like about Raid is all of the customization options they give you with your champions. Here we are in our mastery section for Kale. We got him set up as a campaign farmer, but you could set up your champions to specialize in whatever game mode you want. And this month's Raid's got a non-stop schedule of summer events and activities. We're talking special fusion events to get a brand new legendary champion, tournaments against other players, and much more. They've also released five amazing new champions, and each of them looks incredible, and I cannot wait to try them out. And if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you need to do is click on the link in the description or scan my QR code, and in your account, you will receive the free epic champion Chunoru, who is amazing in the Doom Tower. You'll also get 200,000 silver, one experience boost, an energy refill, and an ancient shard. So you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. And all this treasure is going to be waiting for you right here, guys. But don't wait because it's only available for new players and it's only going to be available for the next 30 days. So don't wait, guys. Yes, it is that simple. Just click on the link. And I'll see you in game. Yes, big shout out again to Raid for sponsoring this video. And if this is your first time here, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know as soon as a new video is uploaded. And for more great Marvel Strike Force and future Revolution content. But without further ado, let's get to all of your questions. Boom. Valley flying greetings from Camelot. What is up, brother? What's the name of King Arthur's sword? Oh. Is this a clue here? Are we going to a clue here? Let's, let's continue with this question and, and then I'll give you my thoughts on this. Oh, well, I guess it has no relevance. I, I don't know if you're being truly uh, factual there. Have you noticed how Boundless loves the game? Hokey Pokey. They put their left foot in. They take their left foot out. Well, what if they put in a new right foot? The Dawn of X may be coming, but we'll see if they put their right foot in or take their right foot out. Now, this is a question. I guess it has some cryptic meanings, but we were discussing this on stream last week, and it has to do with this, Emma Frost. And with this last update, she got in, she got a uh, costume added in the game. It is called the Dawn of X costume. Uh, whether it's whether it's sitting on the Quiet Council of Krakoa during the day or running the Hellfire and Hellfire Trading Club at night, Emma Frost has a dazzling, elegant outfit for any occasion. And this is a first appearance in Giant Size X Men, Jean Grey, and Emma Frost. And we take a look at what that comic looked like. This is the cover of that costume. So it has a Jean Grey. So their non-Phoenix uniform, uh, sort of a, like a Phoenix uniform. And there we have that version of Emma Frost, but this is her Dawn of X costume. So if we look at Dawn of X, this is a this is a publication that lasted from October 2019 to November of 2020, and it affected a lot of different comics. X-Men, Marauders, Excalibur, New Mutants, X-Force, Fallen Angels, Wolverine, so on, so on, a bunch of them. Now, if we are to take the Dawn of X as meaning Excalibur, this is where a lot of the speculation could, uh, is coming from, from some of these new characters. So this did affect Excalibur, 
And if we look at Dawn of X, the primer, how it affected Excalibur, this could be a very interesting addition for Marvel Strike Force. This is what uh, we were discussing on chat. So we see a couple characters that are in the game, or one of the characters that are in the game, Jubilee. We also have a uh, Captain Marvel, Psylocke. So I guess she's kind of in the game. And we have Richter here, who was indicated in one of those screenshots as uh, having the relationship with Shatterstar. So Richter was mentioned in Marvel Strike Force previously. We have Gam and Ro also there, and we also have Apocalypse. So if you look at the characters, Captain Britain. This is uh, Captain Britain's sister, uh, Betsy Braddock, who is AKA Psylocke. So I guess, I guess she is Captain Britain, but the, the more traditional, the Captain Britain that I know uh, is, is, is Psylocke here. So Psylocke's in the game. Rogue not in the game yet. Does that Dawn of X uh, happen to mean something with Excalibur? And maybe this is a team that's coming to the game. Rogue, Gambit, Jubilee is in the game. Richter was mentioned in the game with Shatterstar and his uh, loading screen. And then Apocalypse, who a lot of people have been talking about for a long time as far as maybe a legendary character or a world boss. Let me know how you would want to see this character added to the game. And let me know if you, if I know this is very, very weak, loose evidence. This indicating that maybe Gambit Rogue coming from this, but let me know if, if this is uh, if this is leading your head or if this is just crazy outside the box tinfoil hat stuff here, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this, but let's get back to the questions. All right. Should I take Zemo to six red or Thanos? I have both uh, both have, or have both fallen out of meta. They both have fallen out of the meta. Or should I just save my gold promo credits? You should save your gold promo credits. Uh, if you had to do one over the other, I probably would do Zemo at this point. If if I could save though, I would save for both of these characters. Zemo still is going to have some value as a skill character, as a character that's important on War. And Thanos is still going to have some value uh, as, as far as a member of the Black Order. They're still a good team. But I wouldn't take either of these characters to seven right now uh, with promotion credits. I don't even know if I would take either of these characters to six right now with gold promotion credits. So uh, I would save it unless unless you really like these characters and enjoy just, just doing it because you like Zemo a lot or like Thanos a lot. Or or you just have an abundance and you don't and you don't need help nowhere in the game. I would I would save it normally with promotion credits. I like to save it uh, for content that I'm not uh, not able to do. So if there's a raid that I can't do and I put a, another star on a character, that's what would make me consider it. Uh, if if having that star would allow me to finish the raid or something in an arena or a war team that I'm trying to uh, beat. If if doing that, if putting that star on would allow me to do other content that I'm not able to do, that's what I'm looking for. If it's just Oh, it would be nice to have another star in him. I'd probably save it. Unless unless you're like a crazy will that just buys everything that seems nice. Uh, if you're a little more selective with what you do, save, save it. I wouldn't, don't use it on Zemo or Thanos. All right. Hey, Valley, is the watch Reminex shaken already been immortalized in the game? I have not seen it yet. Where can we find it? Thanks. So I was actually trying to find it earlier in some real time arena battles. It's in the aim stage. So if you go into the aim stage towards the end of that battle, when you win, there's going to be a, like a banner floating across the back of the screen that says Reminex shake it. So look in that aim stage for that. But uh, yeah, I was, I was trying to find it. I couldn't, I couldn't get a battle with that aim stage, but it's there. It, it's floating across a little banner like like one of those banners like a plane would pull uh something's pulling that across the screen so look for it towards the end of the battle next time you go into that aim screen brother uh but it is in there if i start a canadian account for future revolution will i always have to play with a vpn on no no you don't uh you're, you're gonna be tied to the region that you're in so if you're right now everybody's on the north american server so if you're in north america and you start a canadian account it's tied to the the region that you're in so not necessarily your country so if you're if you're in north america you're going to be tied to that north american server you're fine if you're in europe or in asia or in australia or some other part of the world that have, being on a north american server would be not beneficial for you because of ping times and things like that uh you may want to consider holding off 
Uh, you could play right now for some enjoyment. You may want to still play on that North American server. I think the downside to continue to play on that North American server, if you start right now, is you'll have a lot of ping times. Where if you start on a server that's in Europe or Australia or Asia, that's closer to wherever you are, uh, you'll have less ping times and you'll be on a server that starts new at global launch. So there's going to be some benefits to starting now, especially if you're in North America. There's some benefits to waiting and uh, those it's going to be up to you what what is best for your situation brother but uh, you're near you're, you're you, you could play on different accounts you don't always have to have a vpn but you might have some long ping times uh if you if you are uh if you're in some other region and, and playing on a north american server uh but yeah if there's anything else let me know in the comments guys because that's that's what i would think off the top of my head but yeah you're 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 there's there's one server open right now and that's in north america and if you start playing right now in future revolution you're tied to that server or at least your account data is going to be tied to that server All right valley have a suggestion for a new game mode that i think could really help everyone out the danger room all right uh so unfortunately this is not a new one we've had danger room suggestions for a while but i like this i like uh i, I like a, like a sandbox mode where you could test out your characters you could put any of your characters into a static shield or static shield agents on defense to be controlled by the computer on auto then you could take any of your characters including those you put on defense in for offense there would be options to select raid mode war mode or normal so you could use that game mode specific abilities you could even set which roll room you're simulating to get those specific bonuses so uh, this this is they, this is actually developed. There there act there actually is something like this, just not for the players. When we went to the devs' offices a few years ago, they had this on on uh, tablets. I, I I don't know if there were iPads or Android devices, but they, they had a bunch of tablets with this, and that's how they test stuff out. They they test out battles uh teams and everything and they're able to uh, select stuff so we were able to when aim was coming out with the rework we we're able to test a few things with aim on uh, that uh, war defense team and that shield that colson fury shield when that first came out uh we were able to test stuff and uh, different teams and different modes with those and they so there is there is something like this it is developed it's just not made available to the players i wish they would employ something like this that they have for the devs for the players that we could just use this as a for fun mode to test out stuff we could test out content uh i it's, this this is people have been wanting this for a while but i guess i guess kind of like you say later in the question there's no monetization there's no rewards no energy you could use this danger room as many times as you want for no cost you don't get any resources out of it it's just a way to test out teams more kill order yeah that's exactly what it's for that's exactly what the devs use their system for the only downside is that i can easily i i can't easily think a way for scopely to monetize it so they have the reason to take the time to implement it so implementing this in a in a in a version for the player would be cool uh but as far as dev costs a lot of the front end stuff is already done uh, there there might be some back end stuff there may be some changes for the players but uh hopefully they could they could put something in like this for the players so we could test out stuff out as well uh stuff that's in the game to check out uh how interactions work in different modes and see if things are working properly because it's obvious that the devs don't play the game like we do they 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 play it in their own way or at least most of them play it in their own way but they don't play it like we do having to go through raids all the time having to go through wars all the time they they play it with this sandbox type mode so I, if, if the players could have something like this i would be very very happy with it as well hey valley love your content i i love you guys for watching it thank each and every one of you for watching the video today brother and uh and 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 everybody else uh, i want to get your thoughts on idea i have about new accounts all right so as it stands there's zero incentive for new players to keep playing especially as msf moves further and further away from free to play funding but what if when you first start out, the game gives you opportunities to unlock tunes you've missed. Oh, you mean like other games do for new players? Uh, yeah, having having MSF and Scopely do some things like other games do for new players, that would be awesome. Uh, I, I don't know why they haven't done that kind of stuff in the past. I don't know why they're having their, the community suggest these things that seem so obvious, but yeah all right anyway yeah so you're you're definitely right brother uh the way that that way the player doesn't feel left behind or that they feel like they joined the game as they at a bad time that's that's what it's supposed to do that's what it's supposed to do so people that are that ha don't have that time investment in the game they can still compete they can still have fun with players that have been playing for a while that's what other games do 
I don't know why it's it's so difficult for Scopely to in, implement stuff like that. I mean, I guess you would have to have a plan to in order to do that. But uh, I keep going off on tangents with this question because I think it's ridiculous that is, this is not in the game yet. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. By giving the players these opportunities, they're incented to keep playing and giving the rest of the team. Then you could have tune calendars that would give them incentive to continue to play shards, gear, gold. The new player would initially fall under a kind of, let's say, 50 to 60 rank grace period where they would uh, get a better chance to play, build your account. Now they give you better access to success in arena war and raids. I think this format would get more players playing the game with uh, their uh, with would get more players playing the game and not alienate them into just spending money to achieve success. Yeah, so this would require the devs to actually play the game and not 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 uh, not not playing us on their sandbox mode like they do to to know what the new player experience is like to see how long it's going to take to get a team. I mean, at this point, the new players should be just be going after the newest teams, Infinity Watch, things like that, because there's no reason uh, to farm a lot of these older characters uh, that that are previous to Silver Surfer. I mean, I say no reason. There's some reason, but there's there's less reason. There's a lot less reason than there was a few months ago or uh, pre Silver Surfer to go back for these tunes. Yes, you want a lot of teams for war and for blitz, but for specific modes like arena and raids, you probably don't have to go back for a lot of these teams. Uh, they're just so old, and uh, yeah, I, I guess it further illustrates that there was no there's no plan for new players right now. So I hope that does change in the past, in the future. Greetings, brother. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. I brought the $100 offer for two Red Star thinking it was a good value. I pulled two minions for Kree Royal Guard and Hand Blade Master. I contacted support to let them know how I feel about it. Not happy at all. I wouldn't have been happy with that as well. And that is always a risk with a lot of this RNG elements that they have for sale. You gotta you gotta kind of expect the worst. You gotta expect that you're gonna get these two bad characters. Is that if you got the worst possible scenario, would that still be worth your money? And if it is, that's the one I spend. Unless I'm making content and it's a little different. But as far as me personally, if I feel that, oh, if I got the worst possible drop from this, would it still be worth my money? If it is, then I'm like, oh, I'm buying it. If it's not, if 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 a hundred if Cree Royal Guard seven stars and a seven star and hand blade master is not worth a hundred dollars, I'm not gonna spend it. But that's that's me, and I and I suggest. I, well, I don't want to tell anybody how to spend, but that's that's how I spend. Uh, I won't be spending for a while. I have to get that bad taste out of my mouth. I wanted to show. I wanted to share how I screwed over. I got by this boundlet scope next. Uh, take care of your customers. Stop screwing us over. So. I gotta, I gotta say, the, the deal is absolutely crap, and it does feel bad. I, I, let me, let me defend them a little bit. They're not totally screwing over the customers. You know what you're getting when you, when you buy that, right? You know that there's a chance of getting absolute crap, and if you get the, and it's a very high chance of getting absolute crap, and you, you kind of go in knowing that. You gotta know, you gotta expect that you're gonna get a very bad pull you kind of expect that you're going to get a silver surfer and kestrel seven stars so yeah is, is that a bad deal yes is is it is it is, are the players should the players know that this is a bad deal yes and if you want to do it despite that then that's cool but yeah i don't think they're screwing over players because it, it's capitalism if you don't like the offer if they're putting out crappy offers don't buy it you don't you don't need to buy all the, the crappy offers so yeah, is it bad? Should you buy it? No, but is it screwing the players? I guess if, if you're if you're not giving the right expectation, it can be. But I, I think the expectations, at least for longtime players, are set. Um, all right. I wanted your thoughts on this. In the last five weeks, I pulled seven red stars on five characters from four elite or, or elite four orbs. That is that is awesome, brother. That is that is very awesome. Now, the characters. Not that as awesome. Mr. Fantastic, Spider-Man, Sharon Carter, Shield Operative, Crossbones. How bad is this? I would say it's not bad at all. Obviously, these are not the characters that you want seven stars on. If you had the choice of seven characters, I don't think any of these characters would be your choice. But anytime you pull a four and you get a five, six, or seven, you get something better than what you're expecting. I would say that's a win because you defied the odds. If you get a if you get a five and you don't get that five, if you're opening a five elite and you don't get that five, you get a six or a seven, you're defying the odds. You're, you're doing better than the odds. So you defy the odds a lot. I'd say you're doing very, very well. Now, I wouldn't recommend spending promotion credits on any of these characters. 
unless they're your favorite character and you just want to use them and with with the knowledge that you know that they're not the best in the game if you have that knowledge and you still want to do it anyway then do it if you if you don't then don't do it but yeah I, i'd say you i'd say you won brother because you pulled these seven stars you didn't buy them i'd say it's a win for you so congratulations on that i, I it's it's not the ideal situation but you're doing good brother all right uh valley flying just recently under lock dr doom was wondering if you have any other team suggestions for him outside of the Fantastic Four. So I use Doom on a few teams. I don't use them on the Fantastic Four at all. So uh, if you don't have Adam Warlock, you could run the hybrid version of the Infinity Watch. I think that's the best for Arena. Kestrel also works on that team, but Doom works sometimes. So there's that one team for you. On War Defense, I don't. I haven't seen a Doom Fantastic Four counter other than last week i haven't seen that in months but last week i did see some on defense so they're still there but more often than not the reason i'm bringing that up more often than not i'm seeing them uh doom with uncanny x-men or the brotherhood 2.0 those are the better defensive options for him i think that brotherhood one is a little better than the uncanny x-men but i think the brotherhood you could still use on offense so there's 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 a little bit of a double-edged sword if you go with that version but uh, yes, that, that's what I'm seeing more common on war as far as doom not not so much fantastic Four. I don't see him on offense I don't see my alliance mate saving it for offense and as far as the raids uh, Yeah, I don't think I don't think fantastic four was ever a dominant raid team But what uh, I'm using him in a doom war I think he's great in any mystic lane that you could uh, bring him in He's great in the tech lanes that you could bring him in So he wins a lot and then whatever characters you have for doom or the greeks that you could pair him with he runs very well so i uh, hopefully that gives you some help and as far as the exact doom that i'm using uh as, as far as tech we have kestrel on that team we have our dr octopus on the team we have ghost on the team we have a nerva on that team and as far as mystic thanos ebony maw we have adam warlock we have doom and silver surfers on that team so those those are the teams that i'm using for doom none of them are fantastic for so i hope that helps give you some options brother all right, hey Valley, do you think MSF will change the look of Taskmaster after the Black Widow movie? Keep on smashing. I was hoping they would do something as far as like a costume for that because we've we're, we've been this the, the the costume of Taskmaster is not a surprise. We've been seeing that costume with the blue and the origin trailers for over a year now, so we knew that Taskmaster had a different look in Black Widow. I hope they will. I don't, I, I don't want to see a full new character with that new look, but if they added this as a costume. I would, I, I would like that. I would like to use the new costume of Taskmaster. I hope it is. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. They do stuff so delayed that's uh, sometimes. So, yes, I do. I think I guess this this question is on my opinion, though. So do I think that I if, if it's not coming in this next update, I don't think they will. But uh, I'm going to be optimistic and say, yes, I think they will. All right. Uh, did MSF originally launch with T4 abilities? No, that came. That came within a few months of global launch, but that was uh, definitely not at global launch. Do you think T5 abilities will start to show up with red gear and level 85? All right, so I think as far as the monetization, this would be a very easy monetization method for them just adding T5's new grind level 85. Here's the thing though, if they added T5 abilities, they would have to go back into each character and give them a T5 for their basic, their special, their ultimate, and their passive. They would have to do a lot of testing, which I don't know if they do. Maybe on that sandbox mode, to, so they're not they're not uh, realizing the full implications of changing kits and making characters more strong. But uh, this would require a lot of work, putting new abilities, balancing all that. Uh, so I don't see it coming for that, but I do see red gear coming. I see level 85 coming. I see a lot of that coming, but I I, I just don't see the T5s because. Because I think I think they're too lazy at Boundless and Scopely. I don't think they're going to go in and do all the work for all the characters and balancing this and making sure the game is balanced. I just I just think, <laughs> based on what we've seen from them and, and the sloppiness they've had, I think this would cause way more problems. But uh, definitely Red Gear, definitely level 85, and definitely Dark Dimension 5. I think we need those more than... Uh, then we want those at this point. Why as Phoenix is summoned, wouldn't her being empowered make more sense? Also, shouldn't Dark Phoenix be a villain instead of hero? So at this point, 
now that we have the empowered mechanic in the game we have had thanos and gamora with that mechanic i think it does and if she was released uh in the future and not in the past i think they would make her empowered and do something that way but the reason i think she's a summon is because when she dies she is instead of reviving uh because i think maybe they did have a plan with that black bolt non-reviving type thing uh before phoenix came out i think he came out like a year after her but I think maybe they did have a plan for for a character to not be able to revive so i think they made her a summon on purpose or something like that it was probably something to do with countering revives uh wouldn't empowered make more sense yes it would but th there was no empowered mechanic back then that came with thanos and the phoenix summon mechanic came that uh, also shouldn't dark phoenix be a villain instead of a hero again a lot of these tags in the game are are for gameplay reasons not necessarily canonic reasons uh I, is that a word canonical i, I, I still don't know if it's the word but I, I hopefully you guys understand what i'm saying but as far as i think it's more to do with the tags and gameplay reason like the military with punisher when, he, when that military tag first came in they didn't want captain marvel to be on the defenders team so he didn't have that tag so it was probably a gameplay decision that she doesn't have that tag i mean yondu there was a there's a lot of argument from the beginning from global launch yondu should have a hero and villain tag he could also have a guardian and stuff tag they they could have given double tags so there's a reason that they didn't i don't know what that reason is but they probably had one for gameplay considerations same thing with the phoenix uh the being a summon and not an empowered character but that, that's probably why it's just old they haven't and and to go in and change it now they have to change a lot of things it's kind of like adding t5s to every character i think it was just be too much work for them to go in and change it at this point so i think she's gonna i think she's gonna stay a summon what is good valley uh, i feel you need to share this you need to uh, uh see if you agree since i feel like i highlight scopely's deficiency oh my goodness i don't i don't know if we need to highlight the deficiency uh, and more i think i think players nowadays are pretty well aware of their deficiencies in designing games and all this stuff but let's see let's see let's see what their deficiency is now i'm a godzilla super fan i've been playing godzilla battle line since global launch the game is incredibly fun but filled with hackers bugs etc i'd like uh, like you'd expect from a brand new game this morning they released a blog post outlining the problems and their plans for the future for them to address it it was very candid so the question is if a brand new developer can do this why can't an experienced developer like scopely uh they can it's not it's not the it's not the question of are they able to do it or not able to do it they definitely can do this they're choosing not to do this their scopely strategy of communicating with their community with their players is different than uh the company that made this godzilla game i think it's in their best interest as a player i feel more in touch i feel for more forgiving if there's an issue and i'm getting trans transparency with the devs whereas with scopely's uh way of doing things there there's silence be quiet oh players are unhappy Shh, don't say anything maybe they'll forget that seems like that's scopely's way of business so it's not like they can't do it they're just choosing not to do that now the reason why aren't they doing that I, I, they think it's beneficial i don't know why they think it's beneficial i don't know what metrics they're looking at and maybe it is more beneficial for them to communicate how they're doing it but i know how it feels as a player it doesn't feel good i would like them to communicate more it's not like it's hard to show your players that you're listening and you care yeah so they can i think they can it's just that their their damage control when something goes wrong is to say nothing and not to get out ahead of it i i I think it, it's better to get out ahead of it. I think you do as well. I think a lot of the players would as well. But yeah, the, the uppers at Scopely don't feel like that. So they, they could change it at any time. They're just, uh, this, it's not in their best interest. Or they, they don't think it's beneficial to them. That's why they're not doing it. So watching your weekly news update video with you and Tony Skangili had an idea based on your discussion around Dark Dimension. Tony was saying to raise the level cap every six months in conjunction with doing two Dark Dimensions a year. Based on the amount of time it took to get from 70 to 80, I was exp I expect the raising level cap would be a bit aggressive. So uh, I, I thought that as well, which is why I pushed back on it a little bit. But uh, if they if they do it in different ways, I mean, how much did it take to get from 70 to 75? Was that about two months or so? So if we're, if we're taking a few months to do that, uh, and then it takes a few months to get our characters, and then it takes another few months to get into the new dark dimension, six months is around the time that it would uh, be going through that but there'll be no breathing room and i guess it, it would depend on how available they make whatever the new bottleneck will be at uh 80 but yeah it's 
it's right around that level and you know maybe eight months might be the proper time frame uh but a lot of it is it's not a specific time it's it's really what scopely is going to do to make uh players get through that to get through the next level to get the next bottleneck and to get our characters and uh, be able to finish the next uh dark dimension why not make the traits different for each iteration of dark dimension a la greek raids dark dimension 5 would then be global cosmic city uh uh and etc and dark dimension 6 will be skill mystic mutant etc this would be a great way to keep us from uh striving new achievements and allow us to diversify our rosters uh based on specific iterations we're trying to push all as always love the great content now this is not that bad of a suggestion this is actually one that uh would be interesting for the players and also money making for scopely because we're not we're not able to use the same characters from three to four to five if five had some totally different requirements there would be some overlap but we would need to build different teams based on those different uh traits that we have to do so this this could be a good thing i i think it could be friendly enough for players as well i think it would be more interesting for players and not the quickest easiest method for players but interesting I, i'm okay with interesting so uh, yeah I, I don't i don't think this is the bad thing but uh yeah we'll we'll see what scopely does what they decide on they don't always decide on what i think is the best all right valley uh pray pray appreciate all you do uh quick question about doom three four do you have any recommendations on five tunes to level up for this especially with secret avengers added to the game my wave went around 55k each but i need to know should i replace any of them with a different tune all right so this is who i use i'm not sure who's the best characters nowadays what level you need to bring them up nowadays but this is who i use i use Captain America and Hulk. I think they're a great uh, Wave 1 Avenger characters. Black Widow for the speed, the stun. And I think back when Doom was coming out, uh, that was around the time I was bringing her for Dark Dimension. So she was built up enough. Uh, Falcon is a great character for speed, and he does some damage as well. Uh, and Fury gives the survivability that's one thing that the team was lacking the survivability fury gives that with uh the shield operatives that he uh summons and then he has some healing that he does on i believe it's his special it might be his ultimate but he does he has some healing on one of his moves so that is the team i brought up they were they they smashed through that the, those nodes pretty easily I, I don't know about easily but they smashed through those nodes that's who i used uh some of the newer characters might be a little easier for you and i would if you haven't built up those characters to where you want think of characters that you're going to use in the future i don't think i needed to build up any of those characters those are just characters that i had so think of the characters that you're planning to use in the future maybe in ultimus depending what ultimus you're on maybe you're in dark dimension or in the doom raids already think of the characters that you're going to bring up for the doom raid so build up characters that you plan to use later is what i would recommend but those those are characters i use so hopefully those help uh got got you those uh pretty pretty good with those uh with all the speed and the healing survivability and damage uh, all right next question always love your content brother and enthusiasm you bring in your videos as a content creator what motivated you to start putting out your own videos and what advice would you give someone to looking to start a channel for who's passionate about marvel strike force uh and comic book content in general uh so as far as why i started basically i had another channel i was doing personal training at the time and was making videos on that took a while to make those videos because that had a lot more research started doing uh content on this channel just as as a way of having fun and maybe possibly uh getting a little bit of monetization to pay for some of the spending that i would do in the game that's that's basically what the goal of the channel was when i started uh then had a little more free time put when strike force came in put effort into that was releasing content pretty consistently and i think that is that is my big advice to you as well consistent content uh when i when i first started off i was not monetized when i first started off this channel with uh, strike force was not monetized was was not getting any uh ad revenue or anything like that and obviously this channel was so small there was no sponsors at the time so uh, i was just about making content and i was having fun making content i put out videos uh at minimum five videos a week for probably the first six months uh with zero zero monetization or anything like that so if you want a channel uh to start to grow consistent content i think that's going to be the most important thing uh just get the content out there and you could adjust your content obviously will get better and better as you do it more and more but i think the most important thing in the beginning is just be consistent with it you'll learn from your mistakes as far as uh, presentation and editing and all that stuff so just just do it brother don't don't think about it too much 
just do it and and your audience will let you know where they want the content to be what what kind of content they want to see from you they, it, it'll adjust based on that so just the basic thing just just do it put out the content and uh adjust later but just just do it you could you could do this stuff so uh hopefully that helps you uh thank you thank you for uh following for the past three years and uh hopefully we got more more ahead uh valley i was wondering if i should go phoenix black bolt or magneto ah so this is a legendary question uh if i was starting off nowadays phoenix i think unfortunately is kind of skippable uh, i use her on war defense and that's pretty much it there's no real place that i use her nowadays in the game black bolt i use him on war offense so he's a little more valuable magneto i use him on war offense so he has some value there i think if i had to pick nowadays if 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 i had to let go of all these characters and get one back i think i'll get black bolt back magneto is good I could I, I could live without the Brotherhood 2.0 though. They're they're a good team and I use them all the time in war. If I didn't have them, I don't think it would hurt as much as not having Black Bolt. So nowadays I would say Black Bolt is who you should go for. But uh, it's kind of like the answer to the previous question. If you like one of these characters more than the other, I don't think they're in that much of a meta conversation that you should be you need to be going at Black Bolt. I think he's he's the best nowadays. But if there's one character that you enjoy despite where they are in the game and their value in the game go for that one because at the end of the day this game is about fun so it, it, even if a character is weaker if, if playing with that character is going to give you have uh, give you more fun then do that uh or or if there's specific teams like maybe you have a very strong brother 2.0 and you just need magneto then go magneto or or maybe you have a strong colossus and the rest of your uncanny and you just need uh, phoenix to finish that team then you go for Phoenix, but my choice would be Black Bolt. But I don't think there's a wrong answer here, just uh, just based on where where they are in the meta nowadays. All right, hey Valley, I hope you are well. I hope you are too, brother. I'm struggling in Arena. I have a 630k Infinity Watch, including Kestrel's my fifth. I'm struggling beating Infinity Watch with Adam, even on a 100k punch down. Not only safeguard, but he usually stuns two of my characters, followed by a demolition of my team. Uh, they just go after, they just go after, go, go after, go after, go. Is there anything I could do or am I stuck until I get Adam? My Silver Surfer is a bit weak. He's only 103k, uh, 3k, 3 gold, 3 red. So you can, you can still use Kestrel and uh, you may have to adjust the kill order. Now the stun from, uh, the double stun from Adam Warlock is not going to come until his second turn. So you have a little bit of time for that. Uh, what I would recommend, and I usually do this with an Infinity Watch versus Infinity Watch. So uh, I think this will still work with Kestrel. I think the Infinity Watch versus Infinity Watch is a little better based on what I'm hearing, but this should still work. So your first target is Philavel. You need to take off her ability to give them healing anytime they have death proof. So take off Philavel first. After that, I usually go either Moon Dragon or Nebula. Nebula is probably the better person to kill because of her assist, but you have to kill her twice. So because of that, it might make sense to go for Moon Dragon first, especially if you have a Moon Dragon with a defense down on her. I take out that Moon Dragon, make it a three on five situation or a three on four, depending what the opponents have done. Make it that uh, situation as soon as possible. But if Moon Dragon is protected, maybe she has some barrier up. Then I'm gonna go for Nebula first. Get rid of those, get rid of those pesky assists that she does. But getting rid of Moon Dragon is not the worst either. So uh, once you're once you're get once you're down to Gamora and Adam Warlock, it's you could pick. But uh, if you can get ability block on Adam, if you get a stun on him before he goes, usually. Uh, my matches, Infinity Watch versus Infinity Watch, it comes down to which Adams goes first. And if it's my Adam, he needs to land his stun. If it doesn't land that stun, then kind of in trouble. But that's, that's the kill order that I do. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helps you. But yeah, you got a little bit of time before Adam does his two-turn stun. So hopefully that helps. Phylavel, then Nebula or uh, Moon Dragon. After that, you do the other one. And then Adam and Gamora last. Valley, it's me again. What is up, brother? My five-year-old son is now obsessed with Marvel Strike Force. He's seeing me play and download it on his tablet. Nice. Nice. He's pretty advanced for a five-year-old. Helping him out kind of makes me want to start a beginner account. Was thinking to start to make videos. All right. So like, like, like the last question. If you're thinking about starting making videos, just do it. Do it for fun and uh, do it consistently. Have no expectation and see where see what happens with it. I I had zero expectation when I started this channel and I kind of took off based on based on you guys watching, giving me feedback. So 
just just have fun with it. So any tips on programs where to start? As far as beginner programs, uh, OBS is the best recording software. As far as editing, I use I use this software in the mid in the beginning called Camtasia. It's more of a screen capture software uh, than an editing program, but it did have a very easy. I don't want to say weak, but it wasn't a very robust editing program like uh photos like premiere does nowadays i'm using premiere uh early on i had a free trial for premiere or, or for the whole adobe suite actually and got that and never looked back i'm like all right i don't know if i could go without photoshop and premiere and audition so that's the programs i use and as as uh, obs to record and then editing there's a bunch of free ones out there i don't know how to use them but there are there you could you could do your research on that but get an editing program uh, some 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 content creators like OMG does that is even edit it just upload it uploads it right right away uh, live actually this is a tip for both of you guys live streaming actually helps not for your content and everything but just being able to hold the conversation uh, on and on and on and going through screw ups and stuff because live live streaming there's no there's no retaking so uh, that that'll also help but hopefully all these tips help it, it, you're going with your fourth account you you are crazy brother but hopefully these tips help consistency uh obs for screen recording i use premiere for editing but you're gonna need some kind of editing software at least in the beginning you maybe not when you when you've been doing it for years like omg but maybe in the beginning you'll need some editing software and uh just be consistent with your content so hopefully that helps you guys and uh, let me know when you guys get some videos up quick question here do you feel like the game is getting extremely repetitive if not what am i missing out on uh you're not missing out on anything uh, it, it goes back to earlier this year when i kept saying the devs they don't have a plan they don't know where they're taking this game and they may have a plan for late 2021 but it's very obvious that in early 21 there was no plan there was no there was no this this update leads to this update which leads to this the least of this it was like here's some stuff here's some other stuff here's some other stuff and uh here's some costumes here's some other ways to monetize here's another battle pass oh here's some red stars for ultron and they didn't really add anything fun they just kept trying to screw with their real-time arena it was such a bad game mode that they added that they that instead of looking for new game modes new ways to add fun they just kept trying to fix that horrible trash game mode and uh this is where we're at so yeah the game is kind of repetitive it's kind of scale i'm waiting to see what their announcement is on what is coming to the game and hopefully it is a new game mode hopefully it's a new infusion of fun but yeah this is this is a downtime i've always said the game goes up and down we're, we're we've been in a low for a little bit and i hope it i hope it turns around Anyone notice that Iceman isn't getting included in double drop going on right now? Not surprised if it's another scoping mistake, but one of it's intentional. So, uh, so as of this, as of the writing of this, it was not in there. As of me recording this, he is in there. So obviously, it was another scoping mistake because he's in there right now with a double drop rate. It wasn't intentional, but uh, scopely, these mistakes are getting old, guys. I mean, we, we were playing Future Revolution. I, I experienced very little bugs in that game. And that's a game in soft launch. This, this, this Marvel Strike Force game is a game that's been out that you guys have got to test and do things with for the past three years, over three years. So it's, it's very uh, crazy that we keep seeing these kind of errors. Do you just curious to see if you think Maria Hill will be added to Need for East passive like Kestrel was recently? <laughs> I don't know about the, I don't know about Nick Maria Hill being added to Nick's freeze passive, but geez, Nick, it, 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 I think it's ridiculous that Maria Hill has a passive with Fury's name in it. And Fury is not indicated in that at all. Her passive is called Fury's right hand, but there's nothing. It, there's nothing for Fury in there. It benefits Secret Avengers allies. And that's it. Fury, as far as I know, is not a Secret Avenger. So uh, yes, I would like to see his passive benefit her. More, more than that, though, I would like to see her passive benefit him, especially because her passive is called Fury's right hand. I think that's really ridiculous. But yeah, it would be a big difference in war. Uh, I guess, I guess once you get the gold stars for Maria Hill, though. All right, Commander Wise says, "Hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well as well, brother. I saw you and Mobile Gamers videos for quality of life change that I thought of one that neither of you mentioned, but maybe I'm grabbing at straws with Bounty's ability to do that. Oh my goodness." Yeah, hey, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Let's read this. I would like raids to have a star system like campaign nodes and star challenges. If you manage to finish a node with your full team alive, the next time you could just auto it. You talked about auto sim raid, but I 
don't want that because sim has a chance of losing all right so i don't want auto sim right i don't want that i want when you hit the base when you hit the auto button it just does their basics over and over and over again if they did that i wouldn't need uh, i wouldn't need uh, i wouldn't need raid sim because i could manage my cooldowns if they if they if they implemented uh, raid sim and we had the cooldowns exactly set how they were or if it was kind of the same as going in and basic 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 having your cooldowns fully set uh then yes i would like raid sim but with without without knowing how the cooldowns would work in that like kind of like you're describing uh i think i would prefer that auto basic button but i'm just getting less and less joy from repeating the same song and dance every other on every raid note even in something a bit more challenging like doom raids once you've done it it should be done in my opinion like a campaign and challenges what do you think well as doom rays i think a little different uh because that that is the end game content right now uh like we said they've had no plan for all of 2021 which is why we're in the place we are which is where which is why end game players there's no content once you're done with dark dimension 4 and unless your alliance is really pushing and you're not keeping up with them there's nothing really to push for in marvel strike force so uh doom I think it is it is the end game content so i don't mind playing that but for some of the earlier raids the easier raids i do want to just auto that there, there should be some things that we play in the game so your arena battles i guess some of your doom raids i guess you're not autoing war but that's it blitz we're autoing real-time arena is a trash game mode that we auto so yeah um more 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 gameplay more fun more fun scopely that's what we want that's what we want in the late 2021 blog post let me know what you guys think is gonna be uh revealed in the late 2021 blog post what is scopely gonna do to potentially write this ship can this ship be writing are they gonna add content for the late game players let me know your thoughts guys and let me know if you think dawn of x means dawn of x caliber and are you suspecting jubilee or uh, not jubilee rogue and gambit i i am curious your thoughts on that as well guys thank you guys for watching uh if you want a question potentially featured in the next week's more uh monday mailbag make sure you're a member of the discord the link is down below so join that look for the mailbag channel there you can leave a question on whatever guys we've had questions on strike force on future rev on this channel on content whatever leave leave a code question there and uh, we do this mail back every week guys so hopefully i will see you guys next time thank you guys for watching thank you each and every one of you that left the question uh check out some of my other videos and i'll see you guys next time give me a hulk fist bump before you go have a great rest of your day valley flying out